Hi, it's Joe from Minerva. Today I'm here to do a short tutorial on how to get effective ruffles if you choose a pattern with that shape on. Today I'm making the chalk and notch farrow dress. So I've got quite long ruffles here, so I want to make sure that that edge that I get along those ruffles is really accurate and gives a really nice finish to my dress. Other patterns that include a ruffle um, are the live blouse. That's by Italia Jupe. It's got a sort of frilly edged collar on or you might be using a flounce or a frilly edge on the edge of a skirt whichever pattern you choose you'll be using the same techniques whichever technique you use to finish your ruffle will sort of determine the overall look of your dress or skirt so if you're wearing a casual dress you can overlock the edge with a really really small overlock you can turn the edge with a blind hemming foot if you've got a little scale and you've got that foot or you can do a double hem turn that's quite skillful because you've got to try and get a double hem underneath um, and enclose the raw edge or you can do it in a single um, turn and then turn again so you get two lines of stitching and I'm going to show you those today the first thing to say about trying to make a ruffle is that you choose the right fabric so if you're choosing the farrow dress or a flounce skirt then you'll need a skirt with some movement and a fabric that you choose should have a little bit of drape or movement in it if you choose a cotton or a linen or a cord or a fabric that's too thick you won't get that wave you'll just get a sort of different silhouette to your finished garment Talking of fabric, the second way to get a really good ruffle is to make sure you get your grain lines right when you're cutting out your fabric. So you need to make sure that the grain lines are um, correct against your fabric because otherwise, um, if you don't, you'll get like a twisted ruffle. You need your grain lines to work so that the weave of the fabric can open as it coils down. Let's have a look at a ruffle shape. So a ruffle shape is normally this sort of crescent shape, but it's really important that you follow the grain line because the grain line will allow your ruffle to have that sort of coil and curl because it's cut across the grain. So make sure you match up your grain lines correctly and that you mark any notches because the notches will help you to fit it around the neckline or the armhole or wherever you're putting this on your finished garment. and you'll get the shape in fabric and it will be quite fluid and particularly fluid as I'm working in a chalet but it'll, different parts of the fabric will have more stretch than others so it will be easy to hem round here and then as this curve gets sharper it will get more difficult here so I'm going to show you how to roll the hem of a ruffle in one pass and I'm also going to show you how to roll it in two passes. To make a narrow hem in two passes, you're going to turn a very, very small hem on your fabric. So you might need to use a pair of tweezers. It depends how dexterous you are. But I'm just going to fold the fabric wrong side to wrong side, as narrow as I can. I'm trying not to stretch the fabric because on this curve I don't want to have extra fabric to deal with. I'm just going to gently sew as close to the edge as I can and keep folding the edge over. I'm actually not going to pin it or tack it or anything. I'm just going to use my finger to roll the hem over by two or three millimetres. Once it's turned down once, you've just held down the raw edge and now you're going to turn it again the same amount. So you've got, you're going to flip that down and you're going to try and sew on the same line again. So you're going to use the line that you've made as a guide and that will turn down 
the narrowest of hems. Pressing really helps because you will find on uh, these curves it's, it's, it goes a bit curly and you might get some sort of rippling in the fabric as it passes different parts of the weave. So keep pressing it at each stage. As you can see there, it's a little bit curly. I'm going to press that flat so that when I turn it again, I'm starting each time with a flat piece of fabric. Of turning a double hem by taking two passes in the machine is that I haven't got to worry about that raw edge flipping out now because that raw edge is stuck down. <laughs> I don't quite go in the stitch line it doesn't matter that's the reverse but obviously on a ruffle sometimes you get a little view of the reverse of the ruffle so it's good to try and keep it as close as you can to that first stitch line or use a really good matching thread and you can smooth out all of those wrinkles where the weave of the fabric has stressed to curve around they iron out really easily, especially on viscose. And you can see there, it's very, very wrinkly. But you can soon turn it into a lovely curve. So from the right side, you get one row of stitching. And from the wrong side, you get two rows of stitching or as close as you can if you've got it straight on top of your first pass. So that's how you make a narrow hem for a ruffle. You can try and double fold it like a double folded hem and that would work too but that would require quite a lot of pins and sometimes it's sort of harder to control. So this way is a way of hemming that just controls that raw edge so that you can concentrate on the finished edge. If you choose to do a normal double hem fold where you fold it down and then fold it again and press it, you will need to make your first fold a pressed fold, otherwise it will just keep pinging up under the machine. It is more tricky it will depend on how sharp your curve is. If your curve is really sharp, like on this part, it's, it's tricky to get the fold without getting any creases in it. But a bit of steam and a bit of work from the iron will at least get you a curve without having to have lots of pins in it. And then you can put it under the machine and sew it but you do get like a little extra little bits that you've got to make sure uh, you can squeeze in. So this is similar to the one method where I put the machine, the fabric through the machine twice. But if you, if your frill isn't too curvy, if your ruffle's got plenty, a bit plenty of stretch in the fabric and you can curve it round, you can take, instead of doing a pass through the machine, you can do an iron. And then do a double folded hem. So now you can go under the machine and fold it down again. That means you'll get one line of stitching on the right side and one line of stitching on the wrong side. I suppose it's useful if you know you're going to see the inside of the ruffle and the two pass method is giving you two lines of stitching. It's just a little bit more tricky to handle. If you've got an overlocker, you can also um, overlock the edge of the ruffle. So I've got the same ruffle cut out and I'm going to have an overlock edge and you get more of a casual um, look with this. So for a day dress, it's fine. Um, for a, a decorative edge, it's fine. But if you want an evening dress, then I suggest you try one of the other options. You may need to get your manual out and make sure that you understand what the dials are on the side. Um, I've just sharpied on. This is my dial for stitch length. This is my dial for stitch width. And this is called the differential feed. So this is how fast it takes your fabric through. So how fast the feed dogs feed your fabric through. 
So this is what it's normally sat on, all the normal settings, one differential feed, uh, a three mil length and um, five mil width. But I'm going to change that to make a really, really narrow overlock edge. So along the edge of my frill be a really narrow overlock. So I'm going to take the feed down just to between 0.7 and 1. I'm going to make the length just one. I don't want a very much of a gap between my stitches and the width I'm going to put onto this the narrowest one and this is what it will look like. So it will be a really narrow, really close overlock stitch. So it will completely enclose the hem and stop it fraying and it will give you a border. So you need to have um, a good colour that matches your uh, fabric. And you can use moon thread, you don't need huge big cones if you just want to get the right colour. And then you need to have a practice before you try it on your actual fabric because although I've used this to get all my stitch lengths and everything, so I've been experimenting, that's straight on the grain. So if I start to do that overlock edge on a curve, let's see what happens. you've got this curly edge it keep the, the fabric is able to continue to twirl a little bit curlier on the edge but you can iron that out the only thing you have to watch is this ruffle had a seam allowance on it for turning twice or turning in the um, with a narrow hem so I've used a lot less fabric for that so you may need to just adjust the beginning and end of your pieces so that they fit so if you've only used that tiny amount of fabric that's the seam allowance that you've used so you could try using an overlocker foot to get your ruffle edge if you'd like a super super slim narrow hem then you can use a hemming foot this is a narrow hem foot it's really slim and it's got a sort of curled metal mould that goes over the top of the foot and so the fabric curls in there and folds over so by hand you are turning the fabric under on the foot the metal pulls the fabric under on that wave of metal it's quite a tricky uh, scale you need to practice a lot first because you need to know how to feed your fabric in, how, what tension to hold on your fabric, so it's best to try on a scrap piece. So that's how the hemming foot works when you see it under the machine but you've, I've practiced on a piece on a straight grain it's slightly different when you then start to try and put the ruffle shape underneath because the ruffle shape isn't going to curl quite as evenly as it does when it's on the straight grain so again you're going to have to practice getting it started is quite tricky because you've got to get it curled around that uh, piece of metal tweezers help so you can use the long nosed tweezers to pull the fabric up into that curl and then lower the foot and you've got to go quite slow to get started and you'll be pulling the fabric up off the plate so you're not holding it flat you'll be pulling it up because that keeps it in the curl. And you can see that piece of metal is pulling 
the fabric and making a narrow hem. Just go really steady, even if you've practiced on a piece on the straight grain, then I would definitely recommend having a go on the curve and you can see what happens when you get to the different parts of the fabric that weave in different ways. I'll just show you what that looks like so far. So that's, that's the right side. The wrong side is the tiniest, tiniest hem. So it works really well on a chiffon or a georgette where you can really roll all of the um, little wispy bits from chiffon into a very, very narrow hem. There's the three main ways that you might uh, finish the edge of a ruffle. Um, you can also, um, on the farra especially, there's also the option to have a double layer of fabric. So you'd need to make sure that your fabric choices are suitable to get two layers that will still ruffle. But I think if you made that as a cocktail dress or more of an evening dress or special occasion wear, you could put a Duchess satin in the underside. So if you made that dress black or navy, then under there, you could put a bright pop color of a satin that would show just on the inside of your ruffle. So that's another technique you could use where you sew the edge of your ruffle to a piece of lining, clip it, turn it out, and you will get the same sort of effect. If you've got too much seam allowance inside the ruffle, it won't curl. It, it can't have any weight and bulk inside it. I hope that's given you some advice on how to get a really nice edge on your ruffle. And it also might help you to choose a pattern with a ruffle that you might not have chosen before because you weren't sure about how to finish that edge. Do come back for more sewing techniques and tips very soon. Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.